everyone. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be running through some examples on solving equations. Except, I'm going to put a grape in my mouth after every equation and we're going to just kind of see what happens. Let me start off by saying that putting a lot of grapes in your mouth is never a good idea. Okay, back to my great idea about putting a bunch of grapes in my mouth while I solve equations. Let's go ahead and get started. This first one's pretty simple. We see it says x plus 5 equals 7. We can ask ourselves, what number, when we add 5 to it, will equal 7? And you might think, hey, I know it's 2, because 2 plus 5 equals 7, and that's right. But we want to have a process, because as these get more difficult, we may not just see the answer. So we're going to use something called the opposite operation or the inverse operation. I can see that this is x plus 5 equals 7. So what I want to do is minus 5 from both sides. When I minus 5 on this side, positive 5 and negative 5 cancel out to nothing, which helps me isolate the variable. But since I subtracted 5 on the left side of the equal sign, I need to do it to the right side as well. This is what keeps our equation balanced. We can always do something to one side as long as we do it to the other side as well. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and bring down my x, and over here, it's just simply 7 minus 5, which is 2. And you can always plug this back in to check and fill in for x. So I can say 2 plus 5, I put the 2 where the x was, equals 7. Yes, that's true. Okay, I guess I'll just kind of put one right there. One's pretty easy, right? Here we go. Okay, for the next one, I have g minus 3 equals 11. So, remember, I want to use the opposite operation. I see a minus 3, and I want to get this variable by itself. So, in order to eliminate the minus 3, I'm going to add 3. And we're going to do it to both sides to keep it balanced. My negative 3 and my positive 3 cancel out. Cancel out, that's the great talking already. G is now by itself. G equals 11 plus 3 is 14. Remember to check. I'm going to put this 14 where the G was. 14 minus 3 equals 11. Perfect. Remember, you can always think about it. Some number minus 3 equals 11. And you might just come up with 14. All right, here we go. I guess like the two sides of the equation, I'll keep it balanced. Get my movie on this side to start with, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Y plus 7 equals negative 4. Let's use our process. I have a positive 7 with the variable, so I want to isolate the y. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. This positive 7 and this negative 7 cancel out. That leaves my y by itself. Over here, I have negative 4 minus 7. So if you think about a number line, we're at negative 4, and we've got to go negative 7 more. Right? So we have two negatives. We're adding them together to get a negative 11. y equals negative 11. We can check this by plugging in up here. Negative 11 plus 7 equals negative 4. That's correct. Great numero trace for those keeping count. Okay, this one's pretty simple. It looks like this is saying 2 times m equals 12. So 2 times some number equals 12. What number is that? You might think, oh, it's 6. You just know the number. That's fine, but let's go ahead and do the opposite operation and see how we can find that number. So this says 2 times m. Since it's multiplication, I'm going to divide. So instead of multiplying by 2, I want to divide by 2 on both sides. And I'm kind of going to write it like a fraction. That's the easiest way to divide when we're working out these equations. So 2 divided by 2 is just 1, which once again isolates the variable, that m, and leaves it by itself on the left side. So I know that m equals 12 divided by 2, 6. 
And don't forget to check. We plug it right back in where that M is. And I'm going to use a parenthesis since they're next to each other because that tells me to multiply. And 2 times 6 equals 12, and that's correct. It's time to try to get another grape in here. This is number 4. I think my, my cheek's twitching a little bit here, but let's keep going. Okay, here we go. One half of Q is equal to 4. So we want to say half of some number equals 4. Do you know what that is? Okay, if not, let's figure it out, right? This one's interesting because we're multiplying by a half. So what we can do is use something called the reciprocal, right, to undo the left side of this equation. Or we can multiply by 2 because a fraction is just a division problem, right? So this is saying like Q divided by 2 equals 4. So if I want to undo the 1 half, what I want to do is multiply by 2 over 1, the reciprocal, so that everything cancels out and leaves my variable by itself, which is Q. Since I did it to the left side, I need to do it to the right side as well. And so I'm just going to multiply by 2 over here. 4 times 2 equals 8. We can always check. We say 1 half of Q, and I'm going to put my 8 here, is equal to 4. Is that true? 1 half of 8 equals 4? Yes. Let's get a grape. Grape number 5. Starting to make me question some of my life choices that brought me to this point, I would say. Let's keep going. Okay, here we are. So this is a two-step equation this time. It is 2a plus 2, excuse me, equals 18. So the first thing we want to do is actually get rid of this plus 2. The goal is to isolate the variable. So I'm going to go ahead and minus 2 from both sides of this equation. Because plus 2 minus 2 is going to cancel out. On the right side, I get 18 minus 2. 2a two equals 18 minus 2 is 16. At this point, it's now a one-step equation. We saw just a minute ago, when it looks like this, I can just divide by 2 in order to undo this 2 times a. This will cancel, and I need to do it to the right side as well. And now a equals 16 over 2 which is also 8. You can plug this back in up here. 2 times 8 is 16 plus 2 equals 18. And now we can check and stick another grape in our mouth. This is number 6. All good. Okay, this one may look more complicated, but that's just because of the fractions. It's really one step problem. So let's see what happens. X plus one-fourth equals three-fourths. Here's my, my operation. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to minus one-fourth. And that will cancel out. And since I did it to one side of the equation, I want to do it to the other side. I'm going to minus one-fourth. There's going to be a simple fraction-subtraction problem. Fraction-subtraction. It's fun to say with the greats. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring my x down, and I end up with 3 fourths minus 1 fourth. Since the denominators are the same, I just subtract the numerators. 3 minus 1, I'm going to end up with 2 over 4, which is the same as 1 half. And that's true. If we take 1 half and add 1 fourth, we get 3 fourths. That's how I can check. I can plug back in for x. Don't forget to do that. Let's get another great, great number 7. Oh, Lord. Okay, it's another two-step one. 3L minus 3 equals negative 12. I'm going to undo this to try to isolate this L. So I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides. And don't let the negatives and positives trip you up. You can add and subtract positive and negatives. I know you can. 3L equals... So if I say negative 12 plus 3, I'm going to have negative 9. And now I'm down to my last step, where I just divide by this 3 to cancel it out. 
and I end up with L equals negative 9 divided by 3 is going to be negative 3. I'm going to hope that you guys can check this because I don't know if I can check them anymore. My cheeks are really hurting. This is break number 8. Rock and roll, baby. So this one is interesting because it looks as though the negative sign is in front of the variable or the x. And um, that can be a problem because I actually want to know what, what the positive value of that variable is and not the negative one. So let's see what we do when we have a negative variable. Um, first, I just, maybe I should go ahead and isolate the variable. Um, or I have a better idea. What if I just add this x? to both sides of the equation. I'm allowed to do that. So on this side, it's going to cancel out. And on this side, it's going to be 2 plus x. Now it's starting to be all positive numbers and look a little more friendly. Um, let's rewrite this. 6 equals 2 plus x. So now that I have everything positive, I can go ahead and minus by 2 and I'm going to minus it from both sides. And I get 6 minus 2. So that's going to be 4. And just x by itself. So x equals 4. So I'm going to come back up here. Maybe I'll plug it in and check. 6 minus 4 equals 2. That's correct. So I know I have the right answer. Let's get another grade. That makes this grade number 9. I don't really have anywhere left to put them. So let's look at one third of x plus two equals four. So it's going to have a couple of steps. Let's go ahead and get rid of this two by using the opposite operation. And a minus two from both sides of the equation. One third x. I'm just going to bring that down. Make make things easier. I don't like to complicate things. You know equals 4 minus 2 is going to be 2. So at this point, this is like saying a third of x or x divided by 3. So I can multiply by the reciprocal of 1 third, right? Or multiply by 3. It's going to be the same thing. So I'm going to just multiply by 3 over 1. Over here it's going to cancel out. I'm left with my x. This says x equals 2 times 3 over 1. 2 times 3 is going to be 6. So x equals 6. And I think that's right because one third of x, right, a third of x, if x is 6, a third of x is going to be 2. So 2 plus 2 equals 4. So it does check out. Let's shove another grape in this mouth. Okay, this is grape number 10. Alrighty, here we go. Okay, here we go. We have negative 5a plus 3 equals negative 22. I'm going to minus this 3. We're going to do the opposite operation. We have minus 3 from both sides. So we have minus 3 here. So here I'm going to go ahead and minus 3 again. We'll keep it balanced, right? So if I can cancel this, we're going to isolate the variable. Negative five a equals I do negative twenty two minus three. Well, I get negative twenty five. So at this point, I can just go ahead and divide by negative five on both sides of the equation. I'm gonna get a equals negative twenty five divided by negative five. It's going to be it's going to be a positive five because it's a negative divided by negative. I've got to hope that you can check this because I'm going to try to see if I can get one more grape in here. I'm going to do negative 25 to everyone. It's 5, I promise. I promise it's 5. Let's see if we can put another grape in here. This is number 11. I have a feeling this might be the last. I, I had to start biting them or something. I can't just do this. Okay, I'm pretty simple here. It's 3 minus 4 a. We're going to start to sweat a little bit for the way you Excuse me. 3 minus 4 a. I bet you do it. It's a problem. That's a problem. 
the negative positive, right? So you put this on the L4A, to so both sides of this equation. So let me rewrite it. Now I rewrite it so it says 3 equals, it's just character, that's character's gone, yeah, equals uh, at 17 plus 4 a. Jersey plus 4 a. 17 plus 4 a. So, I have a minus of 17 and see what I have. 17 from both sides of the equation. My 17 over here as well. Right? So at this point, I'm going to rewrite. And it's pretty simple. I got 3 minus 17. We have negative 14. That equals 4 a. So what I do is divide both sides by 4. I really am starting to sweat. This is hard. This is really hard. Um, and, and, and now my 4's cancel on this side. And I'm going to a equals negative, negative 14 over 4. But I'm going to reduce that. It's going to be negative 7 over 2. And I swear, if you put that back in, it's a jerk up. I don't think I can do that anymore. Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button.